How much would you pay for this? Brum, brum. It worked out to four cents a card. Oh yeah, that's cool. It's like a kid in a candy store. We get to unwrap it. Isn't that funny that they actually made a card with your wife? I wonder if she collects this card or if she's like, oh, that was a terrible photo of me. <laughs> What's going on, Shadow? Make sure you stay through to the end of the video to see what we find. We'll do some price comparisons. That's pretty cool. Stay in school. Hey, Danny, look at these, mate. Going to be unboxing all of these cards and going through them live. Post Malone? Oh, it's Cole Malone. <laughs> Yeah. Where'd you find that? Just over there with all the other NBA jerseys. Quite a bit. One of the grails. You don't see this. So what year did they come out with sleeves? Oh, I think it was 2016. And one of the things that you cannot find is this. All for one. All for one. Are you telling me that about my LeBron that I've got hanging up over there that you can kind of see over in the background? Oh, yes. So one of the best handlers in the game. Um, is he still playing? Yeah, but he plays for Brooklyn. But it's alright, because right, he'll be switching to the Lakers soon. I'm putting it out to the universe. <laughs> King James. Baseball card <laughs> on a basketball jersey, mate. What's going on there? I didn't think about it. That's cheap. That is dirt cheap. I'm about to steal this one myself. This was when he was back at Cleveland back way back. Did people not copy that? Nah, he didn't copy that. That logo, that's not common either, is it? Nah. Sleeves. Yep. This was a LeBron jersey? Oh, mate. So I'll walk you guys around my shop. So basically we bought all this in the last seven months of being on the Gold Coast. The buying up here is endless. There are op shops, flea markets, garage sales, private picks, storage units. We buy it all and film it. If you haven't already seen, subscribe to the channel and come along for the ride. We're always looking for items to flip for profit and we show you how. This is some of the basketball jerseys that we've found on our treasure hunting journey, along with all of this other sporting and vintage clothing. The shoe section that we found mostly through op shops and flea markets. There is so much buying. <laughs> we got these at the flea market on Sunday. What do you reckon, Shadow? We've got new stock going out from the weekend's buyers. One of the weekend's buyers were all these basketball cards. What happened was a gentleman came in and he wanted to sell all these to me and he said that he was only gonna sell the bulk lot. There was an album, which I got to see. As far as the rest, we didn't have time because we were too busy with customers. It's a bit of a gamble. There's about 15,000 cards here that I bought for effectively $600. The folder did have about 30 Jordans, which I can sell in store for $5 each. So there's $150 back straight away. Also a few sheets of Shaquille O'Neal's, etc. The reason that I was willing to pay four cents a card was because I saw inserts. The other thing I saw were these Topps basketball cards. This is 1996 Topps rookie year of Kobe Bryant. So if I managed to pull a Kobe card in good condition, these could be a couple of hundred dollars by themselves. So these are the cards in the folder that I managed to get. I went through them as quickly as I could because we have about a thousand people in the store over a period of two days. So we do get quite busy. These on eBay are only literally a dollar to two dollar cards. We've got these ones straight off the bat and then we go to a few Kobe's. I did actually have a couple more Kobe's but when I brought these back into my shop, I did sell a few straight away. Gold signature Shaquille O'Neal's are more desirable. These basically came out without a signature, then they came out with a silver and also gold. This is the era of cards that I used to collect when I was a kid. There is nostalgia in these cards for me. Generally, you wouldn't pay as much as what I did, but I did because it's got nostalgia for me. These are the silver signatures that I was just referring to. I collected cards from 91 to 95, which is when most people did. I remember a kid in school had a Michael Jordan, one of these, gold edition. And I think he sold that for like $300 in the 1990s when he found it. Quite a lot to go through, guys. But I PC a bunch of players. So PC is personal collect. Really like the look of that card. Not overly worth a lot of money, but just to have one. I also pulled the Allen Iverson uh, rookie card. These cards literally aren't worth 10 cents each. So uh, to try and sell these, I need to put a bundle together. I'll put those boxes in auction when they've been complete to try and sell bulk lots. That's Scotty Pippen. These are insert sets. These are inserts. Any inserts I'm going to put to the side and keep along with any players that I'm able to sell separately as a single. I think that's actually an insert card. It is four of eight. You can buy a complete set for $20. So it's not worth trying to hold on to any of them. You just put them in a bulk lot and sell them as a bulk lot and they've been tied in a rubber band it hasn't really done any damage to the cards because they were only on loose 
Hollow Jams will keep. You can actually buy a complete box set of Hollow Jams for $150. The Jordan Hollow Jam itself was selling for $60 by memory. Larry Bird. I actually um, like these jewel cards. Magic on Barclay. I don't know where. That's a Kim Malaja one. The other thing some people do is they actually collect cards with their PC in the background. So when a player that they collect is in the background of another player's card, they also collect those. I do know people who do collect these particular players, so I will keep them for that very reason. All of these are base cards, so they have no value. 90% 90 of them aren't worth anything. That's another insert. I've done a Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, massive haul. Uh, Magic the Gathering's another massive haul that I've had of late. Um, but we're buying every week, so we're getting a lot of deals coming our way. What's going for $350? I've got Kieran here helping me today, guys. He's pricing stuff for us, isn't he, Shadow? I pulled these at a pick the other day. What you'll find is a lot of wealthy and affluent people don't want people coming into their homes and showing off their collections. Do they? <laughs> Shuko. So German made. It's a rare car. When people do collect a specific car, generally it's because they've got the real one. I've met a lot of people. Um, one guy bought over 500 Willys Coupes diecast cars because he had a Willys Coupe and he got to the point where he sold his car and he sold the diecast car collection. If someone doesn't have something, if they've got 200 Porsches but they don't have this one, they're the buyer you want that'll come in and pay for something that they don't have. If I knew nothing about it, I'd pay like five, 10 bucks, but Would I you? don't know nothing about it, yeah. that's why I'm looking it up. And isn't that funny because as far as like a flea market seller's concerned, they just might put one or $2 on all their cars and put them in the bin. Yeah. As a reseller, it's worth looking up items that you're unaware of and not just putting everything in a blanket category of a dollar or two dollars. See there, it's saying it's like quite a bit of money. But so how much is a quite a bit of money? But when I look it up, nothing's coming up. Because it's rare, so yeah, have you used Google Lens? Yeah, I used Google Lens. And what did that say? Nothing. Really? Yeah, straight up. Oh, well that's good. So where was the Matchbox one that you said was worth hundreds of dollars? Oh, 330 bucks. Okay, Porsche. so that's Etsy though. So that's someone's website and that's what they're asking. Oh. That's yeah. not what it's sold for. So it's in stock. So they're asking 330 for it. So that's no different to me putting any particular price on it that I want, but not getting it. <laughs> Don't I, Shadow? Hey? Say hello to Michael. Who do you reckon would win? Kobe, LeBron, or Jordan? Michael Jordan, all time number one. LeBron James, number, number two. two. Kobe? I don't think Kobe would even have a chance against someone like Giannis. Yeah, I don't think so either. But he's done a lot for the game. It doesn't make him top five. a top five player though. He's like top eight, top nine. But you even think about it, right? Kobe Bryant versus Steph Curry. Kobe would smoke Steph. Oh, you think? Yeah, 100%. Eat him alive. What do you reckon? Hey? It was funny because I had a guy ring me and ask me if I had any Parker pens. And I still don't, but the following day, I found all those pens. I thought it was good just because at least if I found some Parker pens, I'd have a board to display them on. 24 hours later. We might almost get a set out of that. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I've got another one in there. So that's what I'm trying to do. So this is an insert set of eight. I actually had a guy come in who wanted football cards because I've got a lot of AFL cards. So to give you an idea of the cards that we've got in store and then all of that's full as well. And he was looking for a particular player who's his neighbor because every time he finds a card of his neighbor, when they have a barbecue, he asks him to sign a card for him. If you're gonna buy a bulk lot of cards, think about the bulk lot of time that it's gonna take you to sort through them. It wasn't until Jordan came back and Kobe came into the competition where you get the value. See the difference there, guys? So standard base card, fifth anniversary card. We got the two versions of the Chris Webbers. One thing you do want to do is always try and put a good card on the front so people think that there could be value in here, which is what I'm always aware of as a buyer because a lot of people come in, try and sell to me, having done the same thing. I remember going to America back in 2016 and a guy that I was buying cards off, I bought, my son bought one of the sealed packets of Pokemon cards from 1996 and the guy was selling them for $50 a pack and he had boxes of them. And I remember saying to my son that uh, he was wasting $50 buying a sealed pack. So these are more inserts and that's an insert as well. And I was buying sealed boxes for $50 a box. So I was buying the likes of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Batmans, that's another insert. Anyway, my boy, his pack is now worth, I think $5,000 and my boxes are literally only worth $200 a box. So he won that competition. How you going, mate? Yeah. 
No, you're welcome. Come in and have a look around. These had no good players in them, so all of these inserts aren't actually worth um, a whole lot of money. They're still only bringing a dollar a card. These packs were some of the cheapest cards you could possibly buy. Tops Gold, because they're not normally gold in the writing, and when it's got the Tops Gold, that was a limited edition run. But limited edition can literally still mean there's a million of them made, as opposed to 10 million standard cards. I think Shaquille O'Neal is the best card you can pull from this set. The next day, they're the cards that I pulled before I started showing you guys on camera. That's what we've gone through so far for that as a return. So there are quite a few cards. What I'm actually going to do in this part of the video, guys, I'm actually going to go over onto my... Should I go live on Facebook, Instagram, or TikTok, Kieran? Facebook. I'm going to go live on Facebook right now. I'll save the video on there. If you want to see what we pull in this part of the video, head over to my Facebook account and check it out there. just went into Pack Fair and just bought heaps. One people pay more than retail. Yeah. We got Lee here working on some Gold Coast P <laughs> Gotcha on camera. Are you recording now? Yeah, I'm recording now. I think these are inserts. Yep. Eat these for the logos of the teams. Look. Their own little pile. Oh, there we go. We got a shack. Finally. Scotty Pippen. David Robinson's. Just a few. The Jordan of that's actually a really good looking card. These are going in the keep pile just to go with the player for PC for somebody. Three days later. That's the for sale pile. We're going to try and do that at 10 bucks a pile. This is the pile that we're going to keep and go through at the end of the video. We managed to get through one tub. Now we're going to go through the second one. By the way, guys, I actually didn't notice. I've got a Mickey Mouse patch. These are the $10 piles that I'll try and sell at $10 a pile. Actually, there's some cards that I opened out of a hoops box, uh, but I'm going to go through these. And these are the ones I'm going to show you at the end of the video. These are the ones that I'm not going to worry about. I'm going to start keeping a bunch of these just so that if someone's ever trying to complete their set of fifth anniversary, I might have some for them. I just have a feeling that the guys sorted them before selling them to me. Oh, we've got a Carl Malone fifth anniversary. And Sean Kemp. Because I did like these as a card. They're a good looking card. Another insert. Total D. One of 12. How cool are they? Slams from back in the day. Good looking card. The next day. Tops Golds I think I'll keep just because I don't know how many you'd find in good condition and to try and get the Golds is um, not as easy as what you'd think. Yeah, I collect LeBron James. It's just my guy. LaMelo Ball. My son collects him. And Luka Doncic. Those are like... The guys Kobe collects. So who do you think is going to be the best player moving forward in 10 years from now to have their cards and hold on to them? Luca and Lamella. I'm going to give it to Lamella. Lamella oh, ball. really? So we got a Jordan. I want to get the Shaq one of these. If you get a good condition one, it could be 100 bucks. James Worthy, he had the worst looking glasses in the NBA. <laughs> I've actually pulled out, could you imagine opening packs of the... 88 Fleers with Jordan's rookie in it. And there's people that literally have dozens of rookies of Jordan finding them like this. They're out there. People just don't talk about it because they don't want you knowing how much money they've actually got sitting there in assets like this. I just did a live on TikTok, but unfortunately the TikTok lives don't save. So that's why I've tended to do them on Facebook because you can actually search them. Instagram, I don't think it's um, easy to search either. I should do more for you guys on YouTube. For those of you who watch the content on your phone, do you guys watch it on landscape or portrait? Comment below how you prefer watching the content when you're watching live videos because I have the option on YouTube to do live videos in portrait or landscape. So comment below portrait or landscape and that's how I'll make them moving forward. I like it watching it this way. Yep, so that's landscape. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> hey, this is the shop, how it's coming along. We've got new stuff going out every single week. Follow the journey if you haven't already. Gold Coast Picker. Always buying and selling. Every week we're out finding stuff. 
I've actually sold basketball cards through auction houses that have sold far greater than any eBay comparisons. If you guys want to see how I do that, make sure you subscribe to my Patreon. Links in description below. Four to six days later. Down to this. That's all we've got left to sort. We've got kids sorting Lego. But Kieran, he's going to sort out how many players I've got of the ones that I've decided to pull to the side. And that's from this bundle here. Um, and then where are those other bundles? I don't know. Oh, the, <laughs> this is the... What is that? This is what we've decided to sell in the shop that's not worth anything. So we're going to sell those in $10 piles like what we've discussed. And then I'll run you through all the cards that I can get at least a dollar for. So there's probably 600 bucks here in value. It's taking forever, isn't it, Kieran? Do you enjoy this? Yeah, why not? Does this look fun or boring, Lee? It's not my cup of tea. No, <laughs> I'm bored of it too. Just like going through this and making up one kilo bags of Lego. Um, I think there's 30 bags in there so far. So that's all I fit in there. So good job. Good job. Good job, smile for the camera, smile for YouTube, tell all your friends. All right, guys, I've uh, officially given up just because of the time it's going to take me. So I've actually gone through all of the cards that we managed to buy in the shop and I've pulled out and started sorting all of those, but I still had all of those to sort. So I don't particularly want to go through all of those and sort them by player. So what I'm going to do is I'll show you what I did decide to pull out and keep. And then it's a matter of people coming in store because it's just not worth my time to do that. So what we started doing was going through by player and we sorted out the ones that I was keeping aside for people that I know collect certain players. So I'll show you through quickly some of the players that we kept aside and the types of cards that we were pulling from the 90s bundle that we bought. We've got random cards that I kept, which are basically gold and silver. Um, and inserts as well from the 90s pool all the way through Anthony Hardaway 97 was when McGrady was drafted that's a 98 card of his though mid 90s inserts that were part of the packs a metal universe cards are actually a really good looking card and if you find the Jordan of those they do pull good money I assumed I would have had more of his hairstyles but unfortunately he wasn't rocking a lot of them all of these cards here are more of the same so there's quite a lot in there someone yesterday in my live video on instagram if you haven't seen that be sure to check out my instagram it's still on there for you guys asked me to keep aside isaiah riders so i found some already for him even mugsy bogues Kieran, what was your favorite card that we pulled what was your favorite card lee mugsy bogues because he's your height <laughs> favorite player from the 90s magic magic johnson all day today. did you know that Magic. It's magic. So you actually prefer Magic Johnson over Michael Jordan? 100%. Really? Yeah. Why? Magic Johnson was a menace. 6'9". He's LeBron James in the 90s. Come on, Listen bro. to it. Tell us what you like, who you like. Comment below. Who's your favourite player? Who's your favourite team? Who's your favourite manufacturer of card? What's your favourite looking card? We want to hear it. Leave a thumbs up. Comment below what you'd like to see moving forward. Subscribe, share it with your mates. And we'll see you in the next video.